Hey folks, welcome back to My Kitten Reads. I'm Eleanor and this is my February wrap up. Um, I'm sorry for the delay in videos. I owe you a couple of unboxings at least. Um, I've had fairly serious tooth problems and in fact I'm doing this in between sort of the first bout of treatment and then I'm actually going to have surgery later in the week. So um, then I'll try and pre-film some stuff but I really don't know exactly when the next video will go up because it depends on how I feel because obviously tooth problems don't really feel like talking a great deal um, it's feeling alright at the moment but yeah so um, that's the reason why things have been a bit quiet on this channel like I said I do have a couple of un unboxings that I haven't done yet um, which I will hopefully catch up on soon um, but in the meantime my February reading list um, didn't quite go to plan but I did read seven books so um, a lot of it was actually rereading um, but yes, seven books. So I started February by rereading on ebook actually rather than physical copy, but I have it. I Jedi by Michael A. Stackpole. I was rereading this for um, the Rogue Podron podcast, which I'm quite a way behind on, but um, yeah, I wanted to reread this one because I hadn't actually read it in a long time. Um, it's a Star Wars book, obviously, it's an old Legends one. And it's, I think it's the only old Legends one that's actually in first person, which is really weird. Um, but it's, yeah, it's about Corrin Horn, who's from the X-Wing books. And his wife goes missing. And he feels it in the Force. Um, and so this is basically Corrin Horn learning about himself, learning to be a Jedi, learning about his past, and then going off and uh, finding Mirax, his wife. Um, it actually, the first part of the book runs alongside the Jedi Academy trilogy, so you see that from another perspective um, that wasn't in the original Jedi Academy trilogy because I think that trilogy came first. Um, but yeah, I actually enjoyed it much more than I expected to. Um, I'd forgotten how intriguing it is. Um, yeah, I, I actually like Corrin Hon a bit as a character despite the mockery of Rogue Quadrant, so I actually quite instead of actually just sitting and reading my chapters and listening to an episode, I actually ended up reading all the way through it pretty quickly. So that's I Jedi by Michael A. Stackpole. Um, I then continued my Miss Fisher kick and read The Castlemaine Murders. Um, this is one where Franny, her younger sister, Beth, has turned up from England and is driving her mad and they go to Luna Park and they find a body in the haunted house basically. Um, yeah, mummified, bullet studded corpse. Of course Franny finds it. Of course she does. And so it ends up being um, embroiled in the gold fields in Castlemaine, um, in history, and um, in the Chinese. And her lover, Lin Chung, is investigating similar things in the Chinese history of Castlemaine. So that's kind of interesting. Her sister Beth is also kind of interesting. Um, Beth is not part of the TV series, but it turns out she's actually totally lesbian and has been kicked out of the house back in England, and that's why she's come to stay with Franny. And so Franny's like, okay, okay, once they get to understand each other, that's that's a lot easier to deal with. So that's The Castle Main Murders by Kerry Greenwood. Um, I then finished an issue of Uncanny Magazine. This particular issue was the special dinosaur shared universe uh, where all the authors they sort of created this um, basic outline of a shared universe involving dinosaurs and scientific technology and time travel and then all these different authors um, wrote stories within that shared universe um, so yeah that was quite interesting to read um, yeah I can't remember off the top of my head what my favorite story was but there were some really quite interesting ones um, stuff about about communism, stuff about um, being transgender and the different ways you can be transgender, um, stuff about uh, time travel and commerce and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, um, that was an interesting issue to read. I then reread via audiobook The Green Mill Murder by Kerry Greenwood. So um, this is one regarding uh, a jazz hall and also including um, a shell-shocked as or as we would call it these days PTSD suffering soldier from the Great War so um, that's always fascinating so it's the Green Mill murder um, I then I picked up 
Completely on a whim on a day when I'd had a migraine and was recovering from it, I picked up a biography on Madame de Pompadour, uh, Mistress of France by Christine Pevet Allegrant. And so this was really quite interesting read. I actually read it all in one day. Um, and I've been kind of fascinated by Madame de Pompadour since the episode of Doctor Who that she's in. Um, which was, you know, pretty flimsy when you think about it, but she wasn't actually a likeable character by the end. Um, it's really, it was a really interesting explanation of the fact that she moulded French court and the society in French court um, to her whim um, to keep her position, but court itself moulded her personality and she became a lot less liberally minded um, and just clutching onto her position with anything she could manage. Um, even after the physical relationship with Louis XV finished, she held on to her position of official mistress um, because she could make him comfortable and she was she made herself his confidant. So she had a harem, like she kept an eye on this harem of girls that he would sleep with, but she was still his official mistress. Um, and she got herself quite involved in politics, which was actually quite useful because I've just started a class um, since reading this um, about... France from the, sorry, Europe from the Reign of Terror um, in 1789, I think, to 1914. And that's just after this period of French history. So um, it gave me quite a bit of context, which was really quite interesting. Um, so that was, yes, Madame de Pompadour, Mistress of France. Um, then I reread another Kerry Greenwood but Miss Fisher novel by audio, and that was Blood and Circuses. So this one was always a bit awkward, I think, because it's not entirely a nuanced view of circus freaks in the 20s. And so there's a lot of like ableism type stuff in there that's a bit uncomfortable um, and a lot of like checking of privilege kind of needed and that kind of stuff. But still interesting and still a Miss Fisher and I really, really enjoy Miss Fisher's. So it's Blood on Circuses. And then I finished out um the month with another audiobook reread because I'd run out of credits so I couldn't buy any more Miss Fishers on Audible. Well I could have, but and so I reread Tomorrow Pierce's Wild Magic because um I had picked up the first two books in this series on Audible a while back, but the third and fourth one have just appeared, so I'd picked those up and so I'm rereading this series again. And so this is the series that this is the book I started with. Um with Tomorrow Pierce, it's the first book I read about Dane and so therefore sentimentally it's very much my favourite and so it was lovely to reread this, I really really like the audios, um, this particular audio productions that they've done of these books. Um, so this is the first story in Dane's quartet um, about Dane and um, you know this 13 year old girl with a knack for animals that turns out to be magic um, and she turns out to be right in the middle of life in the court of Total um, and in the militaries of Total and the mage, mage community of Total and so yeah this is this is the first one um, Wild Magic, gotta love it. So that was my February reading of seven books so yeah not quite, I seem to keep myself pretty much on schedule um, but I wouldn't be on schedule right now if I hadn't just finished three books like two days ago. <laughs> it happens or yesterday whatever. Anyway I'm babbling. I, my brain is still kind of out of it. Um, but yeah, so I will hopefully film those couple of unboxings soon. I also need to film a bit of a book haul, I think, for February. I think there's a few books that I acquired. Um, but we'll see. Um, I can't promise when they'll come up because, like I said, I'm going to having surgery and I'm not going to be compass mentis come Friday. So, um, yeah, but yeah, if you, if you love any of those books, let me know. Let me know what you think of them. If you're interested in any, let me know and I can tell you a bit more about them um, in the comments below. So yeah, but alright, see ya, bye.